When you look at insulin resistance, tetraplegia complete is worse than tetraplegia incomplete, which is worse than paraplegia complete, which is worse than paraplegia complete. So all that being said, the greater the amount of muscles that are affected, the greater the insulin resistance. So dyslipidemia also uh, occurs in a significant um, level with people with spinal cord injuries. And cardiovascular disease is actually the most common cause of death of anybody who is 30 years out from their injury. And I'm 32 at years out, so you can see my interest in this topic. So um, there's also an accelerated and premature cardiovascular disease, and the HDL is significantly low. This is a common, common feature you see in spinal cord injury and probably a lot of conditions with uh, paralysis. 10% of the, U the U.S. has been stated to have an HDL less than 30, and, but 40% of spinal cord injury, and that's at 30. So if you take it up to the 40 where they're, they're telling us we need to be, it's probably even much, much higher. And again, going back to the previous slide with insulin intolerance, with dyslipidemia, you see it also tetraplegia has a lower HDL than paraplegia, and complete has a lower HDL than incomplete. So this is how I like to think about it. So I'm thinking all these things are going on, how do I put this? So I try to put this on paper and I, I, I refer to it as the paralysis metabolic dysfunction cycle. So this is the triad up there of the VAT denervation and the muscle contraction or lack of. That's going to lead to insulin resistance, which is going to lead to increased glucose, which is going to lead to increase, increased insulin which is then going to feed back and cause more insulin resistance, which is then gonna to go to the portal vein and go to the liver, which is gonna cause NAFLD, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is then gonna cause dyslipidemia, which is then going to cause atherosclerosis. That's bad. So how do we stop that process? 